So everybody, welcome to another edition of The Upper Room with Joe Kelly here on WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. And it's a true pleasure to have in The Upper Room concert series the great band, the trio QB3 out of New York City. And uh, they're in the midst of, of a Northeast tour. In fact, last night they had a very successful show in Enfield, Connecticut. And uh, they're here this morning. We're pre-recording, but uh, you're hearing it here on WVOF and Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com. And uh, let me introduce the band. I'll introduce on guitar Fred Jaron Tab. How you doing, Fred? Good, Joe. Thanks for having us. And, and thanks for coming by. On the drums, Christopher Roots Hines, bringing his stripped down drum set today. So thanks. And on bass, acoustic bass, Zem, oh, excuse me, Emic Rave. Hey. hey. Hi. Yeah. Th thanks, guys, for coming by and, uh, you know, in the midst of uh, a late show last night and, you know, coming down here on your way back to New York. So, first of all, where did you play exactly in uh, in Enfield? Uh, we did the uh, Powder Mill Barn over in Enfield, which is a really cool place. A lot of good bands come through there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a barn. It, it's a barn, right? <laughs> but you can imagine. The acoustics are cool. The crowd was cool. People coming to just hang out and listen to music and have a good time. We played with a bunch of other great bands. We had a, you know, we had a good evening. It's cool. And, and was it a... I mean, your music, we'll get into that QB3, but the, the whole bill was music from all over the place? Yeah, yeah I mean, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a mix of things. And everything world beat Egyptian music they had. Right. <laughs> so so that, that's, that's nice. At least the, the crowd was probably open minded about very, different yeah, very sounds. Cool, very yeah, cool. great. Yeah. Well, QB3 sound is, is just all over the place. Even today, I was hearing, you know, I heard a little reggae beat. I don't know if you guys ever thought of that, but, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the sound is so diverse. And uh, how, how did that come about? Well, it builds. It's um, it's all our influences that just um, come together, and everything we've heard from day one um, just come into this melting pot, and mm -hmm. uh, and they come out to the music that's QB three. So, Emic, you were you were talking before we started, uh, or you guys started playing about your influences. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, how you got into bass, and uh, who who are you listening to, and how do you bring it to QB three? Um, bass, well. I played a little electric, though it never really um, inspired me all that much, so I went straight to um, Upright, and uh, Mingus was a very big influence, of course. Uh, a lot of uh, piano players, um, Bud Powell's very big, and um, a lot of uh, musicians from that jazz era, but we listened to everything, so um, it's all there. Um, everything from electronic to reggae, which you mentioned. Right. And I, I was uh, checking out Christopher on the drums, and uh, you know he he actually had had more drums as usual set, but he brought into the studio uh, a little less, and did a great job, uh, you know, with the different sounds and uh, different stick work like that. How, how about as a drummer? I know uh, when did you get started? Um, I started playing drums, I think, when I was fifteen, mm -hmm. something like that, and uh, I was doing a lot of rock stuff at that point and then when I I started to learn the instrument a little more I got more into like jazz and stuff uh, Tony Williams I really like um, actually I listen to a lot of bass players too mm -hmm. more than just drummers <laughs> right. I'm really I'm really inspired by really good bass players I'm a huge Jocko fan and yeah a lot right. of the bass lines here are actually Chris and, <laughs> and Fred's and right yeah, uh, so everybody. So Christopher, you were, you were part of that upstate New York scene, right? With uh, Moon Boot Lover. Around yeah, there? yeah. For, for a little while, right. about um, about two years, I was in this right. band called uh, Freak Love Messiah, and we played with. Um, actually, did a show with Schleho. Mm -hmm. um, we played with a lot of those those up. Well, Schleho's I think is from Massachusetts, but um, a lot of those bands that kind of all gel together like mm -hmm. that. We did that for a little while. Um, I was a little more jam bandy, you know, not too structured, just kind of just right. went for it but uh it was also had a vocalist it wasn't instrumental and we move along to lead guitarist and the guitarist in the band fred garantab and uh fred uh which guitar did you bring today um that's the new x that's the es335 okay so it's a new guitar not the one i recorded with but uh yeah. it's uh my so, new road guitar so. so so when you were uh thinking of purchasing that one what were you looking for in sound and what what has it brought added to your your playing well i've played solid bodies my whole pretty much my whole existence when i was as i've been playing guitar and i've, I've played a les paul up until now which i played on the recording 
Uh, also play a couple other funky guitars, like I uh, had a fretless guitar we featured on the recording and some other stuff, but in terms of my main player, it's always been a solid body. I like that sort of bite that it has. I've never, um, even though I listen to a lot of jazz guitar players, I've never been a fan of the very clean, woody sound. I happen to like something that's a little more edgy and a little more dirty. And uh, mm -hmm. the ES is a great guitar. I mean, it kind of combines both. You know, it gives you that bottom and nice, like, round tone that a jazz guitar gives you, but it's not, um, I guess it's, how you would say, it's not as sensitive to feedback, and, you know, it can really beat on it a little bit more and get some different sounds out. It's a lot more diverse a guitar than a traditional jazz guitar, and it's a lot more warm than a regular, uh, you know, regular solid electric guitar, so. And uh, we should let our listeners know right now, QB3, they are independent bands, so, uh, they have a great new CD out, The Form of Space, and you can go to a few places. The uh, best place right now, QB3Music.com, and the three is a, uh, just the number, QB3Music.com. It's also available on CDBaby.com, right? Right, okay. CDBaby. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you got the CD and you're independent musicians, you don't have the big corporation out there, what, what have you been uh, <coughs> doing to get it out there, and what have been some of the surprises and what are you guys working on? Well, um, we actually, uh, we, we had a lot of help, which was great. I mean, in terms of, like, from the ground up and the recording, we worked with a great producer, Peter Fish, who mm -hmm. also plays keyboards on the record, and he really helped us out getting the record mixed, and he was kind of our eyes and ears in the studio when we recorded it. And, uh, you know, we've all had some different experience, I guess, in the industry, and I've had some experience, like, you know, kind of getting a band out there and doing the college scene, so... Uh, which we love, you know, because it's really the place where people, like, you know, listen to music, you know. Right, and yeah. uh, so we, uh, you know, we've just been doing a lot of different things, very grassroots, you know, uh, the type of things we've been doing, really just kind of uh, going out there, you know, talking to as many people as we can, giving the CD to people, um, you know, we encourage people to let us know what they think of the CD, and, and people seem to appreciate that, you know, because we get a lot of nice feedback, and, you know, we... We keep in touch with like everybody who writes us, and you know it's great. It's like we meet a lot of great right. people, and you know those people eventually end up going and spreading the word, and uh, you know it's it's nice. It's real cool. And there's a message board on the site, and, and uh, also upcoming dates. You guys want to drop any dates off the top of your head? Well, um, we're at the Bar B, uh, which is in downtown Manhattan on uh, 188 Allen Street. We're there every Friday. Um, pretty much, uh, pretty much consistently every week. We've been doing that for a long time, and that's like kind of our home base. Mm -hmm. um, we have some gigs coming up. Uh, we're actually doing. Um, we're going to be at uh, Images in uh, New Jersey on uh, May fourth. Uh, we're going to be doing a place called the Life Cafe on uh, May seventeenth, which is in uh, Brooklyn, New York. A lot of New York stuff. We're going to be back in the upstate region, uh, circa June, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be back at the Gilded Otter Brewery in New Paltz. Uh, we're going to be doing that June 21st, and then we're going to be at the Rhinecliff Hotel June 28th, which is a great place, and uh, we did recently. So, uh, you know, we could just tell people to visit the yeah. site, qb3.net, yeah, well, and check the, you know, we new shows added every day, so. Sign up for the mailing list. Mailing yeah, list, and, right. you know, we, we post our, uh, we're starting to post our live show archives up there so people can uh, hear stuff like uh, they heard on your show today. Right. That's not on the record yet, you know, live performances. So a lot of the songs you've been doing here in the concert series today uh, are for an upcoming album. Um, mm -hmm. th this album was recorded in June of last year, and... Uh, what what song off the current the form of space has uh, changed the most since since <laughs> first went <laughs> into tape? Uh, probably the one we never played since the record. Uh, every twenty six. So if we play it today, it's gonna probably sound nothing like it. <laughs> right, right. Um, but they all change. They all change every night. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sometimes in a in a very um, drastic way, and surprises us as much as anybody else. I'd probably say. Off the top of my head, boom probably changed the most. Mm -hmm. It's it's very similar to what it was on the record, but it's it it does a lot more different things now. <laughs> right, right. Knee deep devotion, I think, definitely is, yeah. is right behind it. I mean, right, right. In the recording, we it's not we didn't really I wouldn't say we really curtailed anything in the recording, but you know we we play live so much that that's really our form for experimentation, and you know we take songs that we've been playing a long time that are staple songs and you know to make them both to keep them fresh and interesting both to ourselves and people who you know come see us every week we experiment like with huge pockets of improv and just kind of go into things it just cha like chris said in emic said changes like every yeah. week so <laughs> i think that kind of stems from having a weekly 
you know, residence at a specific right. place where people are coming back to see you every week. You know, you want to, you know, keep things fresh for them. So, 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 you know, as people are listening to the songs, they're, you know, seven to 10 minute songs and it gives you guys a lot of chance to, to stretch out and play. How do you guys play off each other uh, as far as knowing which direction to go? And when, when do you say, oh. man, <laughs> why did why did this guy go this way? <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes. Well, uh -huh. um, I think it's all down to the bare essentials, the melody and rhythm. Um, if something picks up that's that's re that really catches the ear of the listener and us, uh, Fred plays something that's um, melodic, and Fred's great with that. So uh, we'll probably pick up on that and, and make it into something solid that sounds like a new melody, and that will right. probably be a new part of the song that, you know, it's like a song has traveled through a, another city and picked up a little bit of dust on its shoes, and, and that's the new song now. Right. How, how about if you ever work uh, somebody else's song, like a cover song, and make a QB3 style? Do you ever do that? Any any particulars you're working in? We haven't done that in a or long yeah, time. We, we used to do that. All originals? Yeah. I think when we had all originals, less material. That's good. Yeah. 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 Well, i got to give you a lot of respect <laughs> for doing that. All yeah. originals. We yeah, started, I mean, when we started out, we were first kind of, I guess, breaking breaking each other in and like you know getting the band off the ground. We were doing a lot of different things. Did like some Wayne Shorter tunes, <laughs> which was okay. cool. Yeah. Um, you know, because we, we would, you know, when we first started out, we would be like uh, asked to do like these three hour shows. Right. And we didn't, we hadn't quite developed all the material. So, like, we would find ourselves like, all right, well, what do we, what can we play on that would be some fun? So, we would, uh, you know, we would do some Wayne Shorter stuff. We would do some standards. Uh, we would kind of just develop some grooves and jam over. I mean, we did, we did all sorts of different things. So. Okay, I got con confession time for you guys. For you guys. How about the first concert each of you has ever been to? Wow! In your whole life, <laughs> first remember? concert? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's tough. White <laughs> Snake, White Snake, <laughs> White Snake at Jones Beach. Really? That's that was my oh, yeah. first concert. Yeah, I love Jones Beach to see a show. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was cool. I mean, uh, wow! <laughs> wow, dude. that was a long time ago. How old were you when you went to see them? <laughs> Oh, I don't I'm know. I'm asking you this. I must now. have been like 13, 14, right. or something. Wow. How about I'd Chris? Like, I had like really hippie parents, so I've been going to concerts for since I was really, really young. Uh -huh. I grew up in, in Bethel, New York. Like basically, my backyard was the original site of the Woodstock. So like my my mom's been taking me to concerts forever. I don't even remember what the first one <laughs> was. <laughs> right. Like, I know I saw a couple dead cover bands. <laughs> When I was really young, really young, yeah, yeah, and I saw the band. Oh, okay. I think, I yeah, think we had uh, Professor Louis in. Oh, yeah. Chromatics from the band a little while ago to play cool. live. Yeah, so I think it was probably that's one great, of my favorite. great music environment. Yeah, yeah. How about Emic? Um, wow, well, um, I didn't get exposed to actually um, rock concerts or jazz concerts until later on. I grew up in Israel, where um, it's it's rare, very expensive of course and you don't mm -hmm. get that many good musicians coming around but um it was probably a, a lot of classical music from the okay. start so the fifth <laughs> Beethoven fifth was probably the first one um but do later on it no, whoever whoever came through it's just right. um we would we would go and try to try to do and there are a lot of local musicians there that are very good so right um but um to name names it's really hard right it's way way back well, the, this band QB3 is very exciting, and uh, I've been really enjoying the CD, as G has on the Upper Room. And, uh, you know, you guys are, I'm sure, going to be really busy this summer. I know you were talking about festivals and getting out to play. And uh, wh What's the summer? What are you guys looking to do? Um, I think uh, you know, just play as many new places as possible. I think, you know, um, we, we want to definitely want to continue to expand outside of uh, the city, which we've been doing for the last couple of months, uh, work our way around the uh, the coast. Um, you know, we've we've been uh, you know been on the radio a lot, which is cool in different places. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I guess wherever we're heard, try and uh, go up there and meet the people that you know enjoy the CD. And uh, you know, I guess that'll take us uh, around. Probably be back to Connecticut quite a few times, upstate New York, Pennsylvania. Um, you know, we're looking to also hit the south. North Carolina area where uh, we've played before, so should be interesting. Uh, so who's who controlling the music in the tour van? <laughs> <laughs> Emic. Emic. Emic is our minister of travel. That's right. Okay. So Emic, what what do you have for the band in the van? For the band in the van, uh, every, <laughs> well, <laughs> everything. <laughs> uh, we got food. We got um, everything you need. 
right? He makes his own Turkish coffee in the back of the van, <laughs> oh. and that's not a joke. Wow. No. No, we just stop in a rest area and occasionally get hassled by the police for um, being in a secluded spot, but, you know, it's part of what you do. Uh, they shouldn't do it to you guys. <laughs> so QB3, uh, how, how about the name? Where does that originate? Um, <laughs> we had a bunch of crazy names, just like trying to juggle something that, <laughs> uh-huh. that sounded nice and we were recording a demo and we were I think Emic was kind of throwing around this QB3 idea and we kind of it figured in a lot of ways uh, we're from Queens and QB is Queensbridge right, um, okay. and we are a trio um, but a lot of things came together it's a chess move you'd be surprised to know also. oh really okay yeah. and um, <laughs> a lot of um, a lot of things popped up people kept telling us uh, oh you know QB3 is this and that and um, and it just sounded Stuck great and it's, yeah. it's working great and uh, right now while they listen to uh, the concert special right here with QB3 they can do their homework and go to their website right now click on the uh, the website here uh, QB3music.com the form of space is available right now and uh, if you have the chance please go see them live and they'll have their CDs for sale there I'm sure and also cdbaby.com. You can write reviews up there as well for, for the band. And uh, I want to thank Emic Rave Emic. for coming yeah. by. And uh, on bass, on Christopher Root Hines on drums and Fred Jarentab on guitar. Right. And uh, thanks, guys, for, thank for stopping you. by thank on, you for on uh, Little Sleep, but the music <laughs> is still <laughs> great as ever. So we're going to go back, and why don't we get into something off the, uh, the CD. This is called Knee Deep Devotion, then we'll hear some more live QB3.